All right, what do you say you and I go on a little adventure called the San Francisco 49er pass game? And I know what you're thinking. You're thinking it's all about Jimmy G. And without a doubt, Jimmy G is a major character in this adventure. The highs and lows of Jimmy Garoppolo. The special plays and then the plays you go, God, we need you to make that. But there's also other elements in this offense that I struggle with from a pass standpoint that don't make it easy on their quarterback or don't make it easy on Jimmy G as well. And so lots of good things within Kyle Shanahan's offense. Uh, the drop back pass game to me is not one of its strengths. And you know, you go back and forth and some things can be good and then some things I, I'm not really sure what we're trying to do. And then some of the route concepts and how they run them, I'm not really sure. But anyways, let's go on this adventure and I'll show you what I see almost on a weekly basis from this team when it comes to passing the football. All right, so here we go. All right, there's the good. Okay, so we're gonna run go route out here. We're gonna run a flat here, and you're gonna see a lot of teams run, this is what I call pogo, uh, but post or go on the outside with a corner here and then a flat. You see a lot of teams run that. This time, San Francisco's gonna run sim something similar to that, but instead of running a corner, they're gonna run a deep pivot right here. So this is really well done, okay? So we're gonna clear this out with the safety. This buys us space. If this corner wants to roll up, it buys us space in this hole, so that pivot helps because it's not quite as fast. Pull this guy down with the flat, and we're gonna hit George Kittle right here. Really well done sitting there, hang in there, wait for it, boom, put it on the outside number, we're getting a chunk play. Good play design, good job by Jimmy G, nice completion. All right, let's look at a little more of the good, okay? Play action is obviously one of the strengths within this offense. You see Jimmy G right there go to his helmet, and he's saying, alert, 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 we're gonna check to the play action right here. So it's really good, he comes off the play action, and I'm not sure what this route is supposed to be here. I'm not sure where he's going because it doesn't look like he's running a corner. It doesn't look like he's running a post. But nonetheless, Debo Samuel and Jimmy G make this happen. So Debo just isn't going in between these guys and he knows there's two defenders here and he's just gonna settle and slow down right here, and Jimmy's gonna see him because he doesn't have a lot of options. He's gonna see him, and he's gonna drive it right on him in between two defenders, and we get a big play. So again, not really sure the play design, but two guys making a play. Jimmy G, making a play for you. Debo Samuel, you got your guy. Find a way to get him the football, and so there's some of that, kind of making it up, not necessarily on schedule, what have you. Okay, really like this right here. This is... Uh, got Christian McCaffrey down here, and they're going to try to get him on some sort of a choice route here. It's a play that we call chin with a choice and an in, and Jimmy does a good job right here. We're trying to get the choice route. As I come out, what he realizes is there's a void here, bringing pressure, they're playing man-to-man -man everywhere else, but they're voiding the middle of the field. I like it. Probably could have gone to the choice route right there, right? Got plenty of space, could have gone to the choice route, but because he sees that void uh, in the middle of the field, he's gonna pass that up and he knows he's got Brandon Ayuk coming to the middle, bang. Nice throw, another chunk play. So lots of chunk plays we're seeing within this offense. Lots of good plays by Jimmy G. Everybody wants to crush him, blah, blah, blah. Not good enough, all that. He makes a lot of plays in this offense, okay? So here's gonna be another one, similar to what we saw the first time, okay? That pogo concept. I'm gonna run the corner here now instead of the pivot. Back, gonna to go to the flat, okay? Really well done right here, because we talked about it. That pivot helps to buy time if this corner wants to roll. In this particular case, this corner is going to come off and settle in here. So, yep, we could have taken the flat right here because of the depth of those underneath cover guys, but Really well done right here. This is what we call a corner hole shot, okay? So the hole in the defense is right here. It's before you get to this cornerback that's sitting outside. So sometimes it comes out and you got the timing down and you see it and you can drive it into that hole right there on the corner route. 
Boom, Jimmy G does it right there. Puts it right on his body, protects him from a hit. Really, really well done. Another chunk throw and you're seeing it. Boom, 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 boom. Chunk throws, okay? So you got the good of Jimmy G. All right, then you'll have the other things. And this is what frustrates so many people. We see the good, but we need it more often. Here they go again. Okay, it's not a post. This time they're gonna run a pylon route, then the corner, then the flat right here. Okay, so Jimmy gets the read again. Okay, so he probably could have taken the flat with this depth if he wanted to, but Feldy was flat enough with his hips to go up over the top. Great little window right here. But as we go to throw this, ball's high, we miss. Another opportunity right there, and we miss that. Okay, not, not an easy throw up and over, we gotta put it in a window, but missed an opportunity right there. Okay, we're gonna run a little quick post here. So Brandon Ayuk's gonna go across here. Debo Samuel's gonna come off of him and run the quick post. So reading this defender right here, this defender carries with the shallow at all, we're gonna hit Debo. If that defender doesn't follow the shallow at all, then we're going to work back to our concept over here to this side. But here, oh, sorry, messed that up on the other side. Boom, boom, with the shallow. Okay, here's our guy outside and then our post. But as we see with this guy right here, as we run this back, watch that linebacker right there. That linebacker turns and chases the shallow just that much. Boom, put it on him. Ah, right, got to hit it. Got to hit these. These are the layups. Got to make more of the layups. Missed opportunity right there for a first down. Okay, now we're going to come back. Good read. We get man to man. Okay, I got two on two over here. Let's clear out the middle. Got my guy. Debo once again up top. Running the slant route. I like the patience. Getting inside of him. Again, got, got to get this out in front of him. Got to put this out in front of him. Got to be ready. A little too much hesitation. Hang on that back foot, moving your feet too much, missing an opportunity, just hang on that back foot, and we gotta deliver those completions more often. Okay, here's another one. Now they bring pressure, so I'm not a big fan of the pressure answers in this offense a lot of times, but they're gonna bring pressure, I'm gonna have a free hitter, but I like this one. They're running what we call a bullets route, so just avoid this here, and then, you're going to run down and run kind of a wheel or a bullets. Okay, so right here, okay? Sees the pressure, okay? See the pressure coming? Fade away from it a little bit just so you don't have to panic, but gotta make this throw. Got Frank Clark chasing your running back with all this space right here. Opportunity for a touchdown, gotta make it. Gotta make it, and we miss an opportunity. Set it to the outside, lay it up there. Boom, another chance. Another miss. So here you go. You see the good, you see the bad, right? See the big plays, see the missed opportunities. Again, why it's hard to win a championship and why everybody kind of says that about Jimmy. Going to be tough to win a championship with Jimmy because he doesn't make as many layups as you want. He makes some big plays and that's why they win a lot of games and they find themselves in championship type spots. But you got to make those kind of plays to win championships. Okay. And then the little nuances of the game. Okay. So we're going to motion over here with Brandon Ayuk, okay? All you quarterbacks out there, you see this. We start to motion him, and you start to see somebody chase him, okay? So somebody's starting to chase him in man-to-man -man coverage. The whole key on this, if you want to throw a bubble to this guy, and you're thinking about throwing the bubble, as soon as you see that man-to-man -man coverage and this guy chasing him, snap it. Snap it sooner. The sooner you snap it, now, we snap it, and now this guy's got to get through all of this mess and all these bodies to go cover this right here. Helps you to get the ball in that guy's hands quicker, but it forces this guy to get through the mess. The longer we wait, if we let this guy get way out here, and we let this guy get all the way past the mess, and then we snap it and throw it, he's going to run right to it and be able to make... So, right, you see it. He's already through. Snap it right here. Right here, snap it. Okay, even sooner. Oh, I see it. Snap it. Snap the ball. Snap the ball and get it into his hand so he can catch it and get out here and force this guy to chase him down and make the tackle. Farther you let him go, right? You see it. Again, not a good throw. Okay, these are another ones. These are layups. Got to find a way. 
You can't let, there's no way, I don't know if this guy got tipped it or not. You can't let that guy tip it. No way to let that guy tip this ball on the screen. A, you snap it sooner and you can throw it right here to him and that doesn't even become a factor and it helps with this guy. But you can't let this be tipped. This is a missed opportunity big time. Snap it. Snap it and throw it. If you get it in his hands right here, block, block, speed, chase him down, okay? Let the ball get tipped here if it did or you make a bad throw and you're allowing that guy to play catch up. Another missed opportunity here within the offense, okay? Right here. So again, I don't know what they teach him, okay? If I'm looking at this play, so we've got a seam, a go, and we're gonna run a little return back over here, and then we have what looks to me like double slants over here, okay? So the way I read defenses is I choose my sides that I'm going to read based on the defensive look. So over here I got on the top, I've got double slants. Okay, so the only thing I ever look at when I've got double slants is how many defenders do I have to the inside of those double slants? If there's two defenders, right? I'm not reading that side. Why? Because number one can take number one, number two can take number two, and I have no advantage over there, okay? If one of these guys wasn't there, okay? So we X'd out this guy, okay? And now we ran double slants. Now I like it to that side because this guy, I've got two on one. He covers inside, I throw outside. He covers outside, I throw inside. It's just a game of numbers. So this particular play, I'm saying this is gone. Nope, nope, because we got two on two with guys sitting inside of them or where they're going. I'm Xing all those guys out. So now I'm coming back to this side, okay? And what am I looking at on this side? Well, the first thing I'm looking at is, where's the safety at back here? Safety's all the way outside the backside hash here. So where I could say, oh, well, if I'm coming back to this side, I'm going with the one-on-one -on -one go route. In this particular case, I'm saying, not at all. I got the safety beat by position, so I'm gonna look at my tight end. Not sure if that's George Kittle or not, but I'm gonna look at my tight end, and if they carry with my tight end, I'm going to replace right back here to my return. Now, Jimmy's looking over here to the left. Okay, I don't know why he's looking to the left. Don't know, it doesn't make sense and you see exactly what happens. This guy takes that one, this guy takes that one. You have nothing, I knew you weren't gonna have anything unless they screwed it up before the snap, so we shouldn't be even over there. But with that, great job by Jimmy to somehow get back to this backside and find George Kittle on the seam to the backside where he should have been originally. He got back there and he makes a good chunk play, but I need him to get his eyes in the right spot quicker, sooner, and know what he's doing on the snap. Otherwise, that's when negative plays happen if you're trying to force something in to something you shouldn't be forcing in. All right, some of the issues that they have in their offense. Down the red zone, and I'm not always a fan of, of their concepts down in the red zone. Okay, so right here, we're gonna run a double slant concept again. Okay, double slant concept over to this side. Okay, we're really running kind of a combo uh, coverage here. I've got a guy sitting inside and a guy right here, and I think they're trying to double Debo right there. But Jimmy does a good job of finding his one-on-one -on -one to the outside. But these are the little details that I don't like, and I don't know if they teach this or not, but look how quick Brandon Ayuk is on his slant, okay? He's got a one-step slant. So as a quarterback, it's hard to throw that on time, like right there when he breaks. So I've got to wait longer and longer, and the quicker you run these slants, the more time this guy has to close and cover the slant because this guy's not ready. He's looking in here to make sure that that's covered or that linebacker is not popping out under the slant like we saw in the last play. And I'm trying to get my feet set, and if you go too quick on the slant, I've got no chance. And I see it all the time with Brandon Ayuk uh, right there, right? It's just so fast, one yard from the line of scrimmage, and I'm trying to make the throw, and the throw comes out in front of him, but this guy's laying all over him, and he's making it hard on him, and we miss an opportunity down there in the red zone. Okay, here's another one down in the red zone. Okay, off the play action. I don't know, somebody tell me what they're trying to do here. Okay, it looks like a quick out, and then this is gonna be an out that's almost at the same depth, a little bit deeper, and then we're gonna have a cross 
over here. I don't know. I, I don't know what they're trying to do. I don't know if it's uh, details by the receivers or what, but you tell me where you're going to throw it. And one of the flaws of Jimmy is Jimmy tries to make a lot of throws. Okay. And maybe it was supposed to come out like this. And Kyle said, this guy's going to be open. And Jimmy's saying, okay, that must be open. I'm going to try to throw it in there. And this is where mistakes happen for Jimmy Garoppolo is trying to make plays, but I don't know what the read is. I don't know what it is. Sometimes in this offense, I feel it's a lot like, hey, turn around. This guy's going to be open or find a guy open instead of reading something or having quality spacing and, and timing. And again, this could all be on the receivers and, and execution, but I, I just keep looking at it and I have no idea what we're trying to do here. I mean, I guess maybe my thought process could be because he's going here. Maybe Brandon Ayuk is supposed to go there, high over the top, running a corner, and then whoever's backside is going to run across here. Okay, I could buy that. I could buy that as a good concept off of the, the bootleg. But again, it gets clouded. It gets mucked up. Jimmy, throw the ball away. Throw the ball away. There's nothing here. There's nothing to fit in. Throw the ball away and live for another down. Almost intercepted right there. Okay, here we go. Red zone again. Okay, we're coming up. Kind of a pure progression, corner, flat, nope, nope. Then, can't remember who it is in here. Somebody's gonna run what we call a juke hesitation, come across, okay? So, going there, okay, nothing there, nothing here, okay? Everything coming back in here, that might have been the throw that we were gonna make is get this cleared out, get this cleared out, and then come back to this one. It's just a long way to go in the red zone to work all the way back to number five. A lot of things closed down, but nice job here by Jimmy, right? Buy a little bit of time, make a play. He can do some of this. Buy a little time, make a play. So you see him making some plays, making some mistakes, kind of back and forth. What are we gonna get? These are the kind of things that I see within this offense and obviously with Jimmy Garoppolo, okay? So we've talked a little bit about details, okay? Here's some details right here. So we're gonna run down the middle right here. Then we're going to have some kind of choice route. Then we're going to come back to an in, okay, on the backside. Okay, so you see it. Looking over here, matched, matched. You're going to try to come back to the end. Again, I want to watch this from the get-go, okay? So here's what we're doing. We know that we're running an in on the backside. I think this is Brandon Ayuk again, okay? I can't tell my receivers enough if I'm a quarterback. Do not go outside on an in route. Do not go outside. Win to leverage. Win to leverage. Get in here, lean on your guy, and separate. So when I come back to see you, I see this defender outside of you. Anytime you run an in route, you can ask Larry Fitzgerald. Got mad at him numerous times as I tried to force him to never do this. Anytime I come back to an in route and the DB is sitting inside of you when I turn to look at you, you're done. I'm not throwing it to you. I can't throw it to you. I can't trust that you're going to cross his face in that situation. Don't take the easy way out receivers. Use the line of scrimmage. Torrey Holt was unbelievable at this. Use the line of scrimmage. Come down the line of scrimmage to get inside of him, then lean on him and force that leverage to at least give yourself a chance. So watch him down here on the bottom. Nope. Goes outside. This is what Jimmy Garoppolo sees right there. He's coming back and wants to throw this. The window's there to throw this. I can't throw it. I can't do it. I can't let it go because then this guy undercuts it. We got an interception. So details, little details, depth of the slants. Once you see you get inside and lean on that guy, time it up with the feet of the quarterback with the in route. I need you to get inside. So when I turn to look at you, you've got leverage based off of your release that gives me a chance to throw it to you. Now I got nothing to do. Good thing for Jimmy. Didn't try to force this one in there and ended up taking a sack. All right, this is the next element of this offense that frustrates me at times. And it's not just this offense. Lots of offenses in the NFL that you have to build in some hot options for your quarterback. If there's going to be pressure. You've got to give him an opportunity to make a throw and not just be a sitting duck back here, okay? So, okay, so the first thing you do is you motion your back out the back side. So now we've got two tight ends to the front side. Okay, we got 
one and two tight ends over here. The hot guy is this guy right here, meaning if this guy comes, we have nobody to block him, and I've got to beat him with a throw. Okay, so what's our concept here? We are going to run a corner route, and then a choice route or a turn route or something right here comes, and he's running a return route, okay? So I'm hot. This guy's coming to sack me right here. This guy's not looking, this guy's not looking, and he's got to go all the way out here and turn around before I can even throw this to him. Got no options, okay? Everybody's going to scream at Jimmy. Don't hold the ball. What are you doing? And, and now he's trying to, to make something happen, and it's ugly, right? He's trying to force the issue. This guy is dropping off. That corner is right there. I've got no options whatsoever to the front side. Now, I know a lot of people are going to say, well, throw it back here. That guy's open. Throw it back side. <laughs> I, I get it. The problem is if you take your eyes away from a free hitter and think you're going to have something backside and all of a sudden he's covered and he's covered. Now you're, you're the one that looks like an idiot because you took your eyes off the pressure and you thought you were going to throw something away and there's nothing there because you can't verify what's back there. You want to see pressure and attack pressure, but you can't attack pressure with something that is all the way delayed to run a return, or if I've got to wait and throw a corner route for my hot to the top, puts me in a bind, and here you see it. Junk stuff happens, at least we got a throw away and not an interception. And I say that because here we're gonna go right here, and we're gonna come back and they're gonna bring an all out pressure, and once again, we're gonna have guys coming hot here, Actually, I think the offensive line is going to end up sliding this way. So pressure is going to come over here. Okay, so pressure comes over there. See the guy coming free. Where's my hot? Where's my hot? Again, we've got two guys sitting and returning, sitting and returning. And then I've got a corner route right there. Okay, so I've got no quick throws. I don't mind this concept here, but we just need to tell these guys, if you see pressure, just peek right here. Peek on your way in and give me a chance to throw it. Peek on your way in. And again, probably wouldn't do it with the outside guy as much as the inside guy, but I need help from the inside guy. Or what else we could do? We could say, George Kittle, if this guy comes off your head, I need you to just settle right there in the hole and I can pop the ball on you. But I have to have options. Instead, you're going to run a 10-yard corner route. You're going to run a pivot where I can't throw it to on the way in. I got to wait for you to go on the way all the way out and I've got no option. So here we are on the five yard line. Quarterback's going, I'm hot, I'm hot, I'm hot, I'm hot. Where do I throw it? Where do I throw it? Where do I throw it? Don't want to take a sack. What do I do? And so he tries to make something happen or tries to throw it away with the guy in his face. I don't know what he's trying to do, but he's not, he has no options, right? They're giving him no options uh, to throw this. And again, you could say, oh, well, throw the angle on the backside. Not looking to the backside unless I'm guaranteed that I'm going to have a hot. Otherwise, that's going to get me in more trouble. So he's sitting here waiting for something, waiting for something. And if he takes a sack there, we're killing Jimmy Garoppolo because he's taking a sack. Okay? Instead, he's trying to make something happen. And he throws a dumb pass because he's got no options. And now we're throwing a, uh, an end zone, uh, red zone, goal line uh, interception that costs us as a football team. But... As much about play design and play options for your quarterback as it is the dumb decision by the quarterback. Okay, so now here, we give him an option. Here, boom, I'm going to run a hook and then an end up over the top. Get pressure right here. I've got my quick throw. So what does Jimmy do when he's got a quick throw? Sets up, takes it, gets a completion. Okay, not a big completion, but we'll take it. That's what we need on a hot. Replace it, no negative plays, get something positive. Well done. Here we go again, same thing. We're gonna bring pressure. We got a hot again, boom. We're gonna run the same thing. We got our hot, Jimmy does a nice job. Get the hot out, get a completion, get a nice 11 yard gain. Hey, giving me options. He's seeing the options, he's making good plays. Why does he make bad plays? A lot of times he makes bad plays when things aren't open. There's not things available for him, whether we saw 
you know, the concept that we didn't really know what they were doing. He threw it up, uh, almost got it intercepted. Okay, he didn't have a hot on the first one, throws it up, almost gets intercepted. Okay, third one, he throws it up. It does get interception when he doesn't, intercepted when he doesn't have options. Give your quarterback options. So here we go. Okay, now what do we got? got another hot, but we got an option. Give him a chance. Give him something to throw. Boom, right there, ball's out. Get yourself a completion. We'll take it, four yards. Get yourself a completion. Nice job. And you got options, build in the options. OCs, build in options for your quarterbacks, okay? So here's the other thing that I would say, all right? Notice that they've got one, two receivers over here. And we've seen this a number of times. We've actually seen Christian McCaffrey going out this side uh, a couple times on these uh, pressures as well. So notice we've got two to that side and we've got one, two, three to this side. I'm a firm believer that it's much easier to cover a hot to a two receiver side than it is to a three receiver side. So the other option, if you don't want to build in a hot back to this side, is just slide your offensive line to this side. Because now I've got three options up top. Again, we can say whatever we want, but let's just say we ran the same kind of idea that we saw before. And we've got a swing, a hook, and a corner route here. So now, if they bring pressure and make me hot to this side, now I've got two options for my hot. You give me two options for my hot, it's hard for a defense to cover that. We go back to this side here on the bottom and it's really hard to always make two guys available for a hot. Now, sometimes you can, but a lot of two-man concepts aren't gonna have both guys running quick on them. Much easier to have two out of three running quick and putting the pressure on the defense than it is to get two out of two on the backside. So if we wanted to just protect the backside, protect one side here, we could still read this out here if we wanted to read to George Kittle, or we can take our concept to the front side and force them to have to bring an extra guy down and try to cover three to that strong side. See, too many teams, in my opinion, that do this and they slide away from their two receiver side instead of sliding to their two receiver side, or another way to say it, slide away from your three receiver side because it's much easier to build in numerous hots on a three receiver side than a two receiver side. But here, nice job in his face, get it out because you put an option right in front of him, we get ourselves a completion. Okay. Here's the last one, nice job right here. So here's a look at it. They're gonna bring pressure from this side. Okay, so my hot would be to that side. But Jimmy's going to read it out the other side because he knows he's got two quick throws back to the other side. Okay, if we look out the front side, okay, there's our hot right there. Okay, so I like this one, bring pressure. Here's our hot, here's our hot if we wanted to go out that side. Jimmy says, hey, I got two quick throws over here. I think I can beat the pressure, even if I'm gonna turn my head to it, I better get the ball out, turn my head to the pressure, and I think I can beat it on the backside, and he does to the flat, but here's another one of these slants. Brandon Ayuk again here, and he runs the slant here. And so, he's running through all this mess, I have no chance to throw him the football here as he's running through the mess, and he's so quick on it. I'd like to see him get inside, lean up, and throw it here, and again, Sometimes it looks like it works out against man-to-man -man coverage, but the biggest thing is I'm always worried about another body in here. So the faster you go on your slant, the more the next guy comes into play on the slant. We expect a five-yard slant. We expect a certain amount of patience with your slant so I can time it up with my drop and get the ball out in the first window. But nonetheless, good job right here by Jimmy to get the ball out, get it to his playmaker, pick up a nice 10-yard game against pressure. All right, so there it is, the adventure of the San Francisco 49ers. Some highs, some lows, some good, some bad, some good concepts, some questionable concepts. It's just kind of a hodgepodge of stuff every week. And sometimes everything just comes out perfect and it looks beautiful. There's other times where things don't come out clear as we saw at times in this film and you're wondering what the heck they're doing and what the heck is Jimmy Garoppolo doing? Well, I just wanted to give you guys a peek inside that experience, uh, that adventure every single week. And you see and you wonder, what is this thing going to become? Can it tighten up? 
Can it become more efficient? Can Jimmy Garoppolo uh, become more consistent at making good decisions and not the bad decisions along the way? I throw my hands up a lot too because I think there's a lot of good. There's a lot of things that show up and, and say Jimmy Garoppolo is a really good quarterback, but then there's a lot of things that you just you want to pull your hair out and go, you can't do that. We can't win and we can't win a championship that way.